So today, what we're going to be discussing is the periodic table, table of elements. And here it is. Um, I mean, just looking at it, it can be super duper overwhelming. There's, there's all these weird symbols, numbers. This one doesn't even have all of the numbers on it. It's actually missing a couple different um, elements that the periodic table goes to period or element number 118. Uh, but the best thing about the periodic table is that it holds all of the information that we just talked about in that last video. It will tell you everything you pretty much need to know about the number of protons, the number of neutrons, the number of electrons. It also tells you how many energy levels uh, that particular element has. So periodic table holds all of the information that we need to know about any element that we want to. And zooming in, taking a look at each particular element, we have uh, element uh, squares. That's what I'm going to call these, element squares. So whenever you hear you whenever you hear me talk about an element square, I'm talking about the information within each box on the periodic table. And there's some really specific information about the element in the element square. And you guys need to be filling in all these things as we go. And, you know, two of the obvious ones um, should be the name of the element so itself, so sodium. What's interesting is that the elements since we're going to be writing, you know, chemical formulas and chemists use big, huge chemical formulas, they don't want to have to write out this big, huge word uh, every single time. And sodium is actually kind of a small um, word in terms of the number of letters for, for elements. There are um, elements that are super duper long and, you know, that can just get annoying when you're trying to write them down. So what chemists have done is they've taken the word, the element name, and turned it into an element symbol, which is just kind of the shorthand version. So this is the short version of the element name. And uh, some of them, I mean like oxygen, the element symbol is O, and that makes a lot of sense, and hydrogen is H. But some of them are, are kind of weird. There's, there's no N or A in sodium. So like, what the heck? Um, the reason why some of these don't match up is because the the element name wasn't actually sodium to begin with. It was a, a Latin word, and then uh, as time time went on, we changed the Latin word that did have Na in it, and we turned that into sodium. So that's just kind of a little bit of the reason why some of these don't match up very well. Other than the element name, and then the shorthand version of that, the element symbol, we have some important things in here, and I think this guy right here, the atomic number, is one of the most important things in the element square. This guy right here. Uh, because it tells you the number of protons in that element, and the number of protons is just super duper important. So the number of protons, like, like we said, P for positive, in case we got positive protons. Um, every single element, uh, or I should say every single atom of sodium in the whole entire universe has 11 protons, okay? If we would take sodium and somehow magically gave it or took away a proton, we would have a completely different element, okay? So remember guys, the atomic number, the number of protons, always, always is the same for that particular element. We cannot add, we cannot take away protons, all right? Don't ever forget that. We can't add, we can't take away the number of protons. All right. Now the other thing on here that is kind of interesting is we have this thing called uh, atomic mass. Okay, atomic mass is an average mass of all the mm, new word, tricky word. We'll, we'll talk about this in, in just a second. But it's the average mass of all isotopes, and isotopes are just varieties of that element. Now that might be confusing because, well, if you think about it, shouldn't every single atom of sodium be the exact same mass? I mean, if it has um, the same number of protons, shouldn't it have every single one have the same mass? So then how, how in the world can we get an average? Well, remember, what else is in the nucleus? So in the nucleus, we have positive protons, which have a mass of 1 AMU. And we also have 
the neutrons that have no charge, remember? Even though they have no charge, though, they, they play an important role right here in the atomic mass because they also have a mass of 1 AMU. And what's interesting and kind of cool is all the elements, or I should say all the atoms in sodium that make up all the sodium atoms in the whole entire universe, they don't ha necessarily have the same number of neutrons. That can change. And that's why we get this average atomic mass. So let's talk about this a little bit more. Okay, so again, this right here, this number, this 22.99 is the average. So we've added up all of the different kinds of isotopes, all of the different variations of sodium, add them all up together, divided by however many we have, and we got this number, this 22.99. Okay. Now these variations, the definition of an isotope is right here. Okay, so an isotope is just a variation of an atom that has different mass, okay, has a different mass, so isotopes deal with mass, due to neutrons being gained or lost. Okay, so I said that we can't do anything to this number, right, because this is the number of protons, can't gain or lose those, but we can gain and we can lose and have variations in the number of neutrons that we have within a particular um, atom. And what that's going to do is it's going to create the atomic mass. All right. Okay, another thing. Uh, we've got something called the mass number. Now, the mass number is the total mass, total mass of the entire atom. Okay, so if you think about it, total mass, the two main things that were really, really important are, uh, when, when it comes to mass, are the protons and then the neutrons. All right, so protons and neutrons, that's going to give me the total mass of all the particles in that specific atom. Uh, because the electrons, remember, those things are so tiny, we don't care about them when it comes to the mass. We do care about them when it comes to the charge, but right now we're, we're thinking about mass. So we don't care about the electrons. Now this number, this mass number right here, it is not in the element square. I always have to give you the mass number for a particular isotope of an element, okay? So this number right here, the atomic mass, I would have to give you on a quiz or homework on a test, all right? Now let's, let's see um, how we can figure out the numbers of the different particles within a, a particular atom. So we're going to start out talking about atoms that are neutral in charge. Remember, neutral means that there's no charge. So we're talking about an atom that has no charge. I mean, that's good. That's, that's perfectly fine. It's okay if we have an atom that has no charge. All that means is we care about protons because they have a positive charge, and we care about electrons because they have a negative charge. Now, if it's neutral, all of the protons, all of those have to add up to the same number of, of electrons. Because if they didn't, then we wouldn't have a neutral charge. We'd either have a, a positive or a negative charge. So in sodium's case, we take a look at the atomic number, and that tells me that there are 11 positive charges, 11 positive protons. Now, if we have to have an element that has no charge, that would also mean that we have to have 11 negative charges. Okay, so if I add these up, I have 11 positives, I have 11 negatives, I end up with a zero or no charge. No charge. Okay. Most atoms, I would say, um, have this, this neutral charge. Okay, because the number of protons add up to the number of, of electrons and they kind of cancel each other out, leading to no charge. But what's left? Okay, we have to figure out the number of neutrons. And this is where things get a little bit tricky because you know, there's nothing on the, the element square that really tells us anything about the neutrons. So what we have to do is we have to use the atomic number again, the number of, of protons. And we have to use our handy dandy mass number. Okay, remember, I have to give this to you. Okay. So what I would do is I would say, let's say the atomic or the, the mass number for this sodium is um, 24. Okay, that's, that's my mass number. To figure out the number of neutrons, I would just subtract uh, the number of protons. So that's 11 protons. 
and that will give me my number of neutrons, right? So 24 minus, minus 11 is uh, 13 neutrons. In this particular uh, sodium with a, with a mass number of 24. Okay. So you might have learned in, in middle school or somewhere else that you can round this number to get the mass number and then subtract. Okay, that's cheating. We can't do that. Mm -mm. There's n we never ever round this. Okay, so we can't do that. We can't round this number to get our mass number um, because um, there are a whole bunch of different different kinds of, of isotopes of sodium. Some of them uh, weigh a little bit more or they're a little bit heavier because they have more particles and some of them, yeah, maybe you maybe there is a sodium 23, but maybe there is a sodium 20 or sodium 21. And we need to figure out the number of, of neutrons, okay, for that particular particular one. So we have to use the specific mass number to figure out the number of neutrons. So in your in your note sheet, uh, what I'm going to want you guys to do is kind of go through and try it out. You got all the information you need. You've got your uh, symbol, your name, uh, atomic number. You got everything you need. Okay. What I want you guys to do is try and figure out the number of protons, the number of neutrons, and the number of electrons for oxygen. And then I want you guys to do the same thing for this particular atom of calcium.